Welcome back, everyone. It is episode 21. Do you guys remember when you were 21? Are you 21 yet? Are you excited to be 21? I remember when I turned 21 and it was an interesting time. I was like, wow, I'm an adult now. And here I am on episode 21. I feel like I'm reliving my 21st birthday again, if that makes sense. Uh, Today's episode is going to be, is Instagram ruining our lives? And, you know, some people are going to say yes. Some people are going to say no. It really is up to you on how you view Instagram, how you use it, how you um, go about using it daily. And I think it is overall, I don't know, is it is it a useful tool? Is it a bad tool? How do we make it a useful tool and how do we not make it a bad tool? So these are good questions that I'm going to be discussing in this episode. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's go ahead and begin. So the reason why I think in some way Instagram is ruining our lives is because I feel like it is in some sort of way. And the reason why I say that is because I think in one way it gives us the ability to connect with other people, reach out, market ourselves, market our own uh, businesses. It gives us a really good opportunity to and to meet other people and really discuss our ideas with others. And I think that it's really useful in that way. Um, but I think in a, in a lot of ways, it can be also a negative thing. And the reason why is because I think a lot of us tend to look at other people's stories and other people's lives. And that's what Instagram basically is. It's just a whole storybook of people's lives and what it is that they're doing in their everyday life. And I think we can easily get caught up in the fact that, you know, maybe this person's life seems so much more interesting than mine, or um, they might think that, you know, they look better, or I don't know, we're highlighting our lives when it comes to Instagram. We're always highlighting the most important thing of the day, the most, uh, I don't know, fun thing of the day. And sometimes these things are staged. A lot of the times I feel like they're not, you know, genuine off guard pics. You know, those like off guard pics that people take of each other, like catch me off guard, like an off guard pic, you know, and I feel like those are always staged. You know, the ones that are like off guard are really the ones that aren't off guard. And they're like, all right, get me from this angle, you know. So in one way, I think Instagram is really fake. I feel like it's fake in the sense that we're not showing our true version of reality we're only showing the really important and exciting moments of our lives and there's nothing wrong with that I don't think that there's anything wrong with you know sharing your happiest moments with people in in the world but I think the problem comes that you know there are people who are easily susceptible to not understanding that and not understanding that these are just highlights and that life isn't perfect or okay all of the time 100% of the time we always see people smiling just overall happy and we don't realize that life isn't always 100% happy life isn't always 100% okay and then when we see other people on their and see other people's content we're like wow this person has an amazing life they're happy all the time they're amazing and you know my life just looks like shit compared to them And that's one problem that I have personally with Instagram. I feel like Instagram really makes me compare myself to other people, compare my journey, my life journey, my, uh, I guess you can call this a business, I guess, but, you know, my own content business, like I really do a lot of comparing and it's really bad and I'm not proud, but here I am being vulnerable and, and showing you guys that, you know, it happens to a lot of people. If anything, it's probably a lot more common than we think it is. And I'm curious to know, do you guys compare yourselves on like to people's lives on Instagram? Do you guys feel some sort of way? Do you always feel like your life do you feel like your life is less meaning or yeah, less meaning meaningless? Cuz I'm just really genuinely cur- curious to know what other people think. And, you know, like I said, there are times where I definitely do feel like my life maybe isn't as exciting or I'm not doing enough with my work. My content isn't reaching enough people. And, you know, it does make me feel bad. So I think one of the most important things that I could say or the reason why I feel like Instagram 
kind of ruins our lives is because, like I said, we're just fixated on the physical. We're fixated on highlighting our lives that we don't realize how unrealistic of a life we're putting out into the world. And I'm not saying that it's impossible because it's definitely not. There are a lot of people out there who are doing amazing things with their lives. They're putting their work on the internet and they're they're getting, you know, exposure the way that they should get it and receiving, you know, a lot of good exposure and really helping their channel grow. And I think that it's great. It's not a bad thing at all whatsoever. But I think that, you know, like I said, going back to what I said before, it's really hard to not compare yourself to those people. And I'm an average person, like, you know, I have shitty days. I have days where I'm like, okay, my life isn't as exciting as this person's. But it takes a lot of willpower as well and a lot of mental strength to detach yourself from these thoughts and detach yourself from the negative thoughts or or these thoughts that we think of, like, the comparison ones you know, where you're comparing your life to somebody else's. You really have to separate yourself and kind of realize, okay, Instagram is this platform where everyone is just showing off their best selves. Uh, They look the best all the time. You know, they always want to highlight the the good and the perfect moments, quote unquote perfect. And I think once we actually learn to to distinguish reality from opposed reality, if that makes sense, then I think we'll have a better way of maneuvering Instagram. And the reason why I say this is because a lot of what worries me are younger generations, the generations, the the people who are more easily, I don't know, swayable, like the ones that are are more easily uh, convincible. I feel the most... Uh, I guess not scared, but I feel the most worried for the people who are younger, who look up to people who idolize people on Instagram and are like, oh my God, my life is not as amazing as this. How can I make it more amazing? What do I do? How do I, you know, gain more followers, gain more likes, blah, blah, blah. And as somebody who does promote their work on, on online and on Instagram and through other different ways, it's something that I do think about as well. Like I'm thinking about how can I get more exposure and how can I gain more exposure and make people come to my profile or view my content? How do I make it more appealing to people? And that's kind of the other dilemma that I have with Instagram is that we're so, it's so fixated on the exterior and so fixated on the aesthetical appeal of things and it could literally be anything but if it looks amazing then people are going to be willing or people are going to want to see it and people are going to want to uh go to your page see more of you and this is a problem that i've always had my entire life like i feel like i realized from a young age that everyone only cares about the exterior it only cares about what is on the outside rather than what's on the inside. So one thing that I've noticed on Instagram, and it's not always, I don't want to make it seem like this is for everyone, but I feel like the one thing that I've seen on Instagram is that the more you post about your face and like just your exterior and like how pretty you look, it's like that's what gets more attention than let's say, I don't know, delicious bomb ass food, which is something that I post about. And that's usually what I get the least amount of uh, likes on, I guess. And usually I, if I take pictures of myself, I feel like those are the ones that usually reach a lot more people. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. People are making money from doing that. So you know what? I applaud you. I'll snap for you. Because honestly, it can be really difficult to do that. And I think a lot of people are trying to make themselves known and kind of bring exposure to them. And I feel like it can be difficult, especially in Instagram. I feel like it's just a huge competition. It's like who can gain more exposure and who looks better externally. You know, I feel like the the better you look externally, the more profitable your stuff is going to be. And I, I really do hate that because I feel like I don't like to concentrate on my physical appearance very much. Of course, I do post pictures of myself, but if you go to my feed on Instagram, it's earthy.amy and you will see that it's not just me. Like it's not just my face. It's nature. It's food. It's a, a variety of things. And, you know, like I said, the things that aren't really about me or look or have my face in it 
are usually the ones that don't really get that much exposure. But the but I it's interesting though because I feel like the ones that don't get a lot of exposure, the ones who like that those pictures and the ones who are interested in those stuff, like I feel like I'm like, yes, these people get me. These people understand where I'm coming from or they like what it is that I'm talking about or showing here. And it's one thing, you know, that I am happy about. But, you know, overall, I I do feel like we really concentrate and place such a huge emphasis on the external, what we look like. And that's literally Instagram. Instagram is literally just like pictures of you. And we're just it, it really creates a huge fixation on the way that we look externally, because these people could be taking the most beautiful pictures ever and probably be having the worst day like people could be smiling and it might look like their life is amazing but they could be really not in a good mental space even though this picture shows them smiling ha being happy looking happy looking like they're enjoying their lives and behind the scenes they might not actually feel that way so in that way I also feel like Instagram is fake where we are we, what what are the lengths that we're going at to to gain exposure and, you know, how are we taking care of our mental health throughout this process? And I had this discussion with my friend and he brought up a good point, which is something I briefly said before, which is you have to have the willpower to understand that Instagram is Instagram. Like it's an app. It's not real life. It's not you know, it's not true in its fullest form. It's not genuine in its fullest form. And of course, there are people who are probably genuine on Instagram. I like to think that I am. Um, but there have been moments where I question how authentic I'm being. Like, I'll think to myself, is this something that I really want? Is this something that I really like? Or am I doing this because I know that it's something that will bring more attraction to my page or to my content, whatever it might be? I feel like these are questions that I have Asked, this is a question that I've asked myself multiple times throughout this process of trying to get more exposure on my on my on my wow on my page and on my channel, and you know I really don't want to jeopardize that because one of the things that I always told myself if I was going to do this, I was going to stay genuine and true to who I am and not let everything else dictate what it is that I do or dictate how I look or how I feel, if that makes sense. Like, for example, right now, one of the examples that I gave to my friend was that makeup is a good example in a weird way. So, like I said, there's nothing wrong with the way that we do things, but I just want to point some point these things out because I feel like I can't be the only one who are who is having these thoughts, right? Like, there's no way. If I'm having these thoughts, then there's probably like a hundred other people who are probably thinking the same thing. So one thing that I like to um, like to use like as an example is makeup. And the reason why I chose makeup is because it's something that is physical and changes the way that you look as much as people say that it doesn't. Like it definitely changes the way that you look. And I know that because I wear it every once in a while. But right now, for example, I'm not wearing anything on my face. So one of the fears that I personally have is that if I don't wear makeup and I don't look like presentable and look like super, you know, done up and everything, like I'm not, people are not going to be willing to want to come on to go to my channel or go to my page because they're like, oh, she's not like as cute, if that makes sense. It's a really superficial thought to be having, but I feel like this all kind of comes from using Instagram. A lot of what we're doing is really superficial. It is all exterior based. And like I said, I feel like we usually gravitate towards things that look nice, that look beautiful. Like if I see a gorgeous girl on Instagram, I'm going to be like, damn, like I want to see more of her. Like that's that's what I want to see. I want to see more of her. And so I know that it's not usually as popular and it's not very mainstream to not wear makeup. If anything, I feel the complete opposite in a lot of ways. I feel like makeup has become one of these things that are really emphasized. And I, as someone who wears makeup but also doesn't like to wear makeup, I find it very weird because I choose not to, but I feel some sort of pressure uh, to wear it. If I'm doing things like this, for example, where I'm going to record myself or if I'm going to take a picture of myself, I want to make sure I look good all the time. But that's part of the reason why I'm talking about this, because I 
We're not, we're not ever a hundred percent. Okay. We're not ever a hundred percent happy or look good all the time. I feel like it's something that is really exhausting. It's exhausting to try to look perfect. It's exhausting to try to achieve something aesthetically pleasing. Like it's a lot of work and it, it takes dedication. So I applaud the people who actually do it. I personally don't. And the reason why I don't is because I feel like it's not real and I feel like it's not authentic and it's not, a uh, reflection of my reality and it's not a reflection of who I am and what it is that I'm trying to do on this channel and on this podcast. I want it to be real. I want people to see that, you know, I might look really nice some days, but some days I like to wear sweatpants and put my hair up and I like to put coconut oil in my hair and let it sit there and look greasy and I don't look nice all the time. It's not it's not attainable. I mean, I guess for some people it is. And for some people, it's literally their job to look good all the time. And then when they don't, it's kind of like, oh, shit, like what happened to her? You know, and I personally don't want that for myself. Like, I want people to see that I'm a human being and I have, you know, a, a regular not not a regular life, but I just live life. You know, I don't look good all the time. I try. Uh, I try to present myself in the most presentable way possible but there are a lot of times where I just want to feel relaxed and you know why do I why should I feel pressured to to look a certain way or in this in this case the example that I gave you to wear makeup just because I know that that's something that people are gonna see you know the the point of me saying all this is that I don't want to fall into the things that everyone else is doing just for the sole purpose of I don't know you know gaining my followers I feel like if if I'm going to do something like this, I'm going to try to be authentic and raw as possible. So that way, people who are genuinely interested are going to be the people that support me and support the stuff that I do. And I don't want people to just like me for who I am externally because I know that there are there's so much more to me besides just this external part of me, you know? And the reason why I also feel this way is because when I was younger, I felt like I wasn't really that cute. I felt like I was like an ugly duckling. Maybe most of you guys have felt this way. I don't know if you guys have ever. Um, as I got older, I filled out a little more and I got more attractive, I guess. I don't think that I'm ugly, but nor do I think that I'm like, oh my God, drop dead gorgeous. But, you know, I feel like as I grew, so did my body. Like I have like a, a very women womanly shape. I guess. And on top of that, I just, I guess, I don't know, like I just happen to look nicer. Like as you, as you grow, like you're, you change physically. And because I, I did grow and I look different than when I was younger, I feel like more people became interested in me and interested in getting to know me because of the way that I looked. And I don't like that because these people probably never would have given me the time of day when I was younger, but choose to now simply because of the way that I look, you know, and I think that physical appearance is definitely a, uh, an important factor um, in a lot of different ways, for example, in dating. But I think to a certain degree, we just put too much emphasis on the external and we play so much. We're just so fixated. It's like, If this person doesn't look good, like, you know, you might not give them a chance and you might not be interested in them, but they could be the nicest person ever. And it kind of reminds me of like nerdy people. I feel like on TV shows or like in movies where always like the nerdy person is like ugly and whatever. But honestly, from personal experience, what the people that you would consider nerdy, quote unquote nerdy are considered weird are probably some of the coolest people I have ever met like I genuinely love reaching out to people who are probably not the mainstream idea of pretty or um cool and I like to talk to them because I feel like they have something interesting to offer besides just something superficial and I think part of the superficial aspect goes so deep to the point where even our conversations can become really superficial and can become so dull and just not full of anything and just full of shit that doesn't really matter, if that makes sense. So in a lot of ways, I feel like Instagram promotes all of this. If you can understand that, I think that, you know, we can use Instagram for a good reason. And Instagram can definitely be used for a a good reason. It can be used to promote your work. Like I said before, it can be used to meet new people, to network, to connect with other creators, uh, to to really, you know, 
sell not sell your work but show people your work and show people that you have something to offer the world let's say you're like an amazing chef and you want to show people how how good you cook you know instagram is a great way to start that and a great way to show others that you are an amazing cook or you're an amazing chef and it will be able to bring you to people into places that maybe you wouldn't have been able to get to if you had not had instagram and for a lot of people, I think Instagram has become their portfolio. And I feel like that's kind of what my page is. It's like a portfolio. And for a lot of people, it probably is that as well. Like we use it to show our work, show what we can do. And that's kind of what I do. I use Instagram as a way of trying to, uh, you know, use, you know, I want people to see my editing skills. I want people to be intrigued by the mini clips that I have of the videos that I make and be and, and want to see more of that and then come to my YouTube channel, for example. So that's something that I feel like is uh, is a really useful way to use Instagram. And I have met people through Instagram. I have used it to connect with others. Just recently, I went to a vegan pop-up brunch. And it happened to be at a restaurant called The Hollow Bar and Grill. I think it's The Hollow Bar and Grill, but it's in Albany, New York. And another restaurant was making the vegan food, which is Bourbon and Wolf. And Bourbon and Wolf is amazing. If you ever are in the Albany area, please go because their food is awesome absolutely amazing and they hosted the event and they they did all of this and I, I decided to take pictures of the food because I just am obsessed with taking amazing pictures of food and you know it's like food porn and it's awesome and so I took some of these pictures I posted it and I tagged uh, both of the places and they ended up using my picture on their pages and they reached out to me and said you know can you send us uh, the pictures and it was like a really huge moment for me because I'm like wow these people like want to want to use my picture you know like it I just wasn't anticipating it like I kind of was I was hoping that they would reach out to me but I didn't think so and then they did and I was like wow this is really cool so that's a really good example of how Instagram is so useful and how it's a great way to uh give yourself exposure and you know meet other people and also I guess um uh, intentionally promote each other's work so I was really thankful for that moment I'm still very very thankful so thank you to Bourbon and Wolf and to the Hollow Bar and Grill for doing that and helping me out and also I hope that you know people come to visit the restaurant but that's why I think Instagram is really useful but like I said I think it just requires a lot of willpower to um, really to realize that the life that we put out on the internet is not 100% real. It's not 100% accurate. It's not true and raw and authentic. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there who do try to be as raw as possible, as vulnerable as possible, which is something that I'm trying to do. I want to be vulnerable and I want people to see that I'm just normal and I'm a human being with emotions and all of this other stuff. And I think, if anything, I'm actually seeing that there is definitely... I don't know. There's an audience for that. There's an audience for people who want to see people who are real, who are authentic, who are doing things that are that's something that every like a regular person would do, if that makes sense. You know, I feel like when I see people who like do things, sometimes I'm like, wow, I'm not doing that. That's not that's not my everyday life. Like my everyday life doesn't consist of, you know, working from home as much as I would love to. And that's my ultimate goal is to work from home, do what I want and pursue my own thing. So in a lot of ways, in that way, Instagram is actually a good thing because it has inspired me to want to pursue my own thing. It's inspired me to want to pursue uh, the side hustle, which is this, and try to make it full time and make it a thing that I, you know, you know, that I could do forever and that I could do and make money from. And ultimately, that is my true intention. My true intention is to make money from doing this and doing and doing what I love and and make it profitable. And if anyone can do that, if other people that I see online can do it, why can't I do it? Why isn't it achievable for me? You know? And so it's been really, Instagram has been really helpful in fueling this fire within me and fueling this desire to, to make a change, make a difference in myself, and then ultimately have that difference being felt through uh, the camera, which is you guys, and have you guys feel the difference in me and through my own changes have you guys realized that what you want to do and what you want to pursue is possible you know I feel like we all influence one another to do things and if I can influence other people to 
pursue what they want and be happy and live a fulfilled life, then then that makes me happy. And I see other people on Instagram doing it all the time. These There are a bunch of people who I admire, who I look up to, who I'm like, wow, like this is they're doing what I want to do. And, you know, I follow, not follow their steps, but, you know, I look at how it is that they did it, what it is that they had to do to get there. What did they have to go through to get there emotionally? What kind of life experiences do they have to go through? And you can easily learn so much through other people, through the internet, through all different types of social media platforms. And Instagram is just one of them. Uh, but like I said, I really do feel like there is a part of us that does not understand that, some of the things that we're seeing online is not real. It's probably photoshopped. It's probably, um, you know, not accurate and not real. You know, like we like every image that we put out is sometimes altered, and in a way, the image itself is altered because it's capturing a, a portion of your life and not showing you everything else that led up to that moment. You could have been having a shitty day, and then you're like, "All right, take a picture of me. And you looked super cute." Like we would never know that based on the fact that you look cute and that you're smiling and you look happy. No one would question your happiness. And ultimately, I think what we need to concentrate on is the happiness aspect of Instagram. Like, how is it influencing my happiness? How is it influencing the way that I feel on a daily basis? One problem that I also have with Instagram is that I do pointless scrolling. I lay in bed sometimes for an hour up to almost two hours that's my honest truth. Like sometimes it'll be almost two hours. I'll just be watching videos or just scrolling through Instagram. And it's just pointless scrolling. Like I'm not doing anything, but just looking, you know, I get caught up in one person. I'm like, oh, let me go through their page. And I just look at all of their stuff. And then I'm like, oh damn, like they look good. Like, oh, may, you know, like they have this, oh, they've been there or whatever. And I just get caught up and it's a really bad cycle. It's a vicious cycle. So I try not to, I really have to, you know, focus on not doing that. And because I think it's become a habit, it just seems so difficult to do because I'm so used to doing it. But I definitely realize that by me doing that, I'm making myself not feel good. And I'm making myself feel like, you know, my life maybe isn't as important or as amazing. Who would want to, who would want to, you know, listen to my podcast? Who would want to look at me? Who would want to, you know, follow me, I guess. I don't know. Like who, you know, who would be interested if I don't look like this or if I don't have this? There's so many, like, I feel like I downplay myself a lot when I'm looking at Instagram, when I'm on Instagram and I'm looking at other people. And like I said, all of the things that I'm telling you guys is, all of this is kind of like a reassurance for me as well. This is like me telling myself, you know, this isn't, this isn't, you know, you have to snap out of it. You know, this is a reminder to me as much as it is a reminder to you to snap out of it, to realize that Instagram is not real life. And it is to a degree, of course it is. It's a snapshot of our lives. Um, we post snapshots of our lives, but, you know, in reality, it's only a small portion that we're seeing. We don't see the ugly. We don't see the tears. We don't see the anger. We don't see all of this in those images unless we purposely do that and purposely share it. And I want people to see the vulnerable, the raw, and, you know, the authentic part of me and the authentic, you know, version of myself, the, the version that's real. I want people to see the version that's real. And I, and I wish more people did that, like just show the realness and the life of the people that we admire, I guess, you know, we always just think they're uh, okay all the time. They look good. They were like, okay, they're amazing. But deep down inside, how are they feeling? How, how was their life? How are they going about living their lives and how are they how is their happiness ultimately like how is your happiness has your happiness been altered because of instagram okay so do you feel a difference in your own mental health do you feel like because you spend so much time on instagram you are altering the way that you think and in a lot of ways yes the answer is yes for me it definitely alters the way that i think a lot not a lot but a good portion, I would say maybe like 60%, which is still more than half. And it's kind of concerning to me because I don't want to jeopardize my own happiness or jeopardize the way that I think. 
just because of Instagram. So sometimes I've actually deleted the app and I'll delete it for like a day and then just redownload it at nighttime. I did that for like a week and that was really cool. I really liked that because it didn't give, I had, I didn't have an option to go on it when I was bored. I had to look around or <laughs> that sounds so stupid. I had to look around like, wow, that's how, that's how addicted we are to our phones also. And that's why I also don't like Instagram because I feel like I'm addicted to, to just scrolling and looking at my phone. Oh my God. Like I just, it's such a huge problem. Do, do you guys go through that? Because I do like, I will be on my phone and I'm like, wow, I do not want to be on my phone, but it just is such a, a bad habit where it's just in my hand and I'm just like looking at shit on my phone. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like I need to get away from my phone or I need to delete this app. So I do that. Like I'll delete the app and then redownload it at the end of the day or maybe the next day. And it will, it makes a huge difference. It absolutely makes a huge difference. So I think it's a good thing. Um, I'm going to read you guys some of the questions and the submissions that I got for today's episode. Uh, so if you guys don't know, I say this every episode. So if you guys don't know on Instagram, I always go live and you guys have the opportunity to say something. And even if, for example, I don't go live for whatever reason in the future, I decide not to do lives anymore. You will always have the opportunity to voice your opinion not always, but most of the time, like 90% of the time, you have the option to voice your opinion. Even if there's not a, a question box or a comment box, you can always just DM me if the topic entices you and you're like, wow, I, I need to say something, you know? So I did for today's episode, I decided to open up the little box. And so I have the questions on my computer. So we're just going to go ahead and read them. Some of them are just statements. Um, and I'm going to start with the first one. The first one says, people tend to compare to others, even though most share their glory moments only which is exactly what I was saying. We only show the highlights of our lives and we forget to realize that they are just highlights. They're only, these are good moments. You know, we don't show the ugly moments. We don't show the moments where we look like shit, you know, where we wake up in the morning and, you know, you don't look a hundred percent amazing, but that's, that's real. You know, that's why I like that because it's real and it grounds me. And I, and I want that to be felt through my work. Like that's what I want. Also, I, I want people to feel grounded and realize that I am a human being that is normal, that has emotions, that is also on this roller coaster that we call life. You know, life has ups and downs. It's not just about ups. And I feel like that's, the problem also is that, you know, we, because we're emphasizing the ups, we make it seem like if we have downs, you know, what's wrong with my life? What am I doing wrong? Why am I not happy? Or why am I not good all of the time? Like I said, you don't have to be good all of the time. You don't have to look perfect all the time. Whatever perfect even means to you, you don't have to be that all the time because it's absolutely exhausting. And that's the last thing that I want to do. I don't want to feel exhausted from from living and from, you know, just for the simple fact that I want to gain something from, from this, like the instant gratification that I get from having a like, having maybe 10 likes, a hundred likes, whatever amount of likes, 10,000 likes, 1 million likes, you know, I don't want the instant gratification to be something that I'm obsessed with and that brings me happiness. And there have been studies, I'm pretty sure, that have been on the instant gratification that we get from having a like. And then when we don't have it or don't have a certain amount, it makes us feel bad. So that's something to look into if you're interested. Please definitely do. The same person also said, it makes relationships a lot harder. Uh, able, You're able to see your partner's behaviors live. So that's interesting because I feel like that is like for a whole nother episode, but just to briefly talk about it, I think it's definitely true. <laughs> and, in, and, and maybe not in the best way, but maybe also in a good way. Like if your boyfriend, you think your boyfriend's cheating, you can probably figure it out through his Instagram and see, you know, what the fuck's up. But I think that it's probably not a healthy thing to do. And I, the reason why I say it's not healthy is because one, it means that there's a part of you that is insecure. I'm not saying you specifically, but from a personal experience, I feel like it's because there's some sort of, 
you're insecure in some sort of way. And that kind of goes into the whole conversation as well. You know, why do we feel certain ways when we see certain images? You know, we need to do internal work to to figure out why it is that we feel this way. Like when I see other attractive girls, it makes me feel bad sometimes. Why does it make me feel bad? I have to dig deep and think to myself, it's because I don't feel secure about myself. And that's the honest truth. The honest truth is that I don't feel good about myself or feel good in my own skin that it makes me feel some sort of way when I look at other attractive people. It makes me want to downplay their attractiveness and their beauty just for the sake of me feeling better. And it's not a healthy thing. It's not a good thing. And I think it's important that we do internal work and that we acknowledge that the reason why we feel certain ways is because there's some shit going on within within you that you need to really figure out and you need to do a lot of digging. And that's part of you know self-growth. It's part of understanding who you are and part of dating yourself which is something that I said in my previous episode date yourself get to know why you are the way that you are and I guess Instagram is a weird way of getting to do that you know when you when you see something and when you feel a certain way stop for a second be like wait a minute why am I feeling this way and then when you're in that moment try to really dig as far as you can into your soul into your heart into your brain and try to figure out why am I feeling this way am I insecure do I feel like I lack something? Do I, why do I feel this way? So that's something to keep in mind. This other person just bluntly said, yes, Instagram is ruining our lives. And like I said, to me, it really is a mixture of both. Like it's not ruining my life, but it's also sort of ruining my life in a weird way. You know, ultimately I, I, I need to be more accountable for my for my feelings right like nobody is forcing me to feel a certain way nobody is forcing me to feel negative or you know do something afterwards maybe like if I see someone attractive you know makes me want to I don't know get surgery or something you know like you have your own accountability you need to be accountable for yourself and realize why you're behaving in certain ways and um, how that's going to affect you in the long run you know so that's that. He just said, yes, that's it. So this other person said, this is my least favorite app. I definitely think IG gives people unrealistic, unrealistic views of life. And yes, I would agree as well. It definitely does give you unrealistic views of life. Like I said, it is simply highlighting the most important parts of our lives without showing you the before and the after. You could be standing there looking super cute, like, yes, I look amazing. And then the next feeling you're like, you know, the next moment you're just like, no, I don't, I don't actually feel this way, but because it looks good on, 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 in pictures, you know, I'm going to show this to the world and the world will never question my actual true feelings. And that's not good. You know, you don't want to, I mean, people do it anyways, even without Instagram, you know, you need to. I, I don't know, not lie to people. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, I feel like you don't need to, it's okay to have feelings, to have a shitty day. It's okay to be normal and, you know, maybe not look your 100% best all the time. You know, like I said, going back to the whole wearing makeup thing right now, I'm not wearing, I'm not wearing makeup. Like I, I know that I look nice when I wear makeup. That's great. But like I said, I don't want there to be such a huge emphasis on just the way that I look. I don't want people to only be here because of the way that I look, you know? And that's the the huge dilemma and problem with with Instagram is that I don't want to only be seen or heard because of the way that I look, because I look attractive or because I look a certain way. Like there's so much more about me that is more profound and more important than just the physical the physical part of me, you know, there's more to me than just the way, than my face, than my body, than my butt, than my chest. I don't know, you know, that's kind of why I try not to post like body pics because I feel like there's so much more to me. Um, and, you know, that is also for another whole conversation. People feel empowered in different ways. Of course, there are times where I'm like, yes, I look good and I will share it. Like if I look good, I will share it. And I'll be honest about the way that I feel when I feel it. And if I don't feel good on one day, I will be like, okay, I don't feel good today. But that's okay because it's okay to not be okay. If that makes sense. I think I saw that somewhere. It's okay to not be okay. And it really is okay to not be okay. You really don't have to try to achieve this per perfection. 
I guess. You don't have to try to feel perfect even when you know that you're not or try to convince yourself that you are okay if you're if you're not. If you're not okay and you're trying to convince yourself that you're okay, you really need to stop and you really need to take some time to take care of yourself, you know? And ultimately, that's what I want my message to be in this episode is take care of yourself before anything else, you know, even if it comes at a cost. I feel like a lot of people don't take care of themselves and they're so concentrated and fixated on how they look on the external things that are eventually going to fade away. And what's going to be left over is what's deep down inside, which is your personality. It's your soul. It's your, it's your entire being that is going to never die and never end and be beautiful forever. You know, that's why I guess you can say that I'm not really into a track. <laughs> okay. Now I'm just rambling, but I, I really do feel like that's partly why I don't date people who are like super attractive. Like something about the fact that they're really attractive makes it unattractive. Like I want someone who is real and is human. I mean, they're all human, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like I, it's a weird thing that I have. Like I just, I, I find personality so much more attractive than the physical. Like you can be maybe so, so, and if your personality is awesome, I'll be like, wow, like you just, you know, just raised, raised your attractiveness, if that makes sense. Um, but like I said, I think the external does matter. I think it's important to feel good in your own skin. Ultimately, that is that is very crucial and it's crucial regardless of Instagram, regardless of what it is that you're using Instagram for. It's important to feel good on the outside as as important as it is to feel good on the inside. And if you feel good on the outside and if you feel like you look good and you look, you know, you like the way that you look, you're working hard at the gym to to get where you are and you want to show people that it's possible, you know, do it. You know, I'm not saying that. Instagram is evil, but rather what I'm trying to say is that we just need to be more accountable and we need to really um, hold ourselves accountable for the way that we feel when we feel them. If we're on Instagram, we need to realize that this version of reality isn't accurate and it's not 100% what we think it is. You know, it is just uh, in a way an illusion to some degree. It's just a constructed version of our lives. It's a, it's, you know, it's easy to put out into the world, you know, the goodness in our lives. You know, I think it's great that we highlight really important moments, but it's also important to realize that not everyone is good all the time and that's fine. You know, it really is okay to just be normal and to, you know, have feelings and to realize that life is all about, life is a roller coaster. It has its ups, it has its downs, and it's not just one consistent up. You know, I feel like when you're on a roller coaster, I personally don't like roller coasters, but when, when I did, you know, it's like you go up and I feel like when you hit the peak and then you kind of come down, like, you know, I feel like it's all part of feeling good in some weird way. Like feeling good is a combination of not feeling good and feeling good. But I feel like the fact that you don't feel good is what helps you feel better and feel good about your life if that makes sense. So yeah, ultimately my message here is do not let Instagram make you feel like your life is less worthy or that you are not as worthy of having certain things in your life because we are all worthy of having what we want in our lives. We're all worthy of approaching our dreams and pursuing our dreams. We're all worthy of having love that is important, that is real, that is beyond just a physical attraction you know we are worthy of all of the things that we think that we're not worthy of and that you know just because somebody else looks a certain way or has something doesn't mean that they're always happy either you know there are people who are easily fooling all of us making us think that they're good all the time and you know what it's probably really fucking exhausting like i would be exhausted trying to trying to look cute all the time you know because sometimes I really just don't I just want to put my hair up I want to wear some sweatpants I want to chill in a huge ass sweater I want to just be chill like you know what's wrong with being chill and having a good time so that's my ultimate message to all of you guys is to just chill out if you have to live your life and don't let 
Instagram fool you into thinking that your life is less valuable or less worthy or that you're less worthy of any of this. And with that being said, I am going to end it here. Thank you for joining me on episode 21. I am happy, re- like I'm genuinely happy that things are moving. And the other news that I wanted to bring to you guys is that next Sunday, so today is Monday. This is uh, episode 21. On episode 23, Two, three, the big two, three this year. I'm 23 on the 23rd of this month. I will be having the mayor of my town come on my podcast and it's going to be a good one. I'm actually going to open up the conversation to people within my community to make sure that if they have genuine questions or want him to answer some things that might not be addressed, um, I want to give people the opportunity to do that. So if you're in the Westchester area or specifically in Peekskill and you have something that you would like to tell the mayor, whether that's a comment, that's a concern that you have or a question, uh, please let me know. Just come slide into the DMs and let me know what it is that you want me to, to say to him because I will be having him answer a lot of questions and I'm going to be looking through a lot of the Facebook groups that we have um, within my town and we're just going to, you know, I'm just going to make it available to everyone so that way people within the town, you know, have that chance to to ask questions and to, you know, have their concerns being heard because that's part of a democracy, right? We need to all be there and, you know, be together and help one another. So I'm excited for that and I hope you guys tune in for that. It's going to be epic honestly this is like the beginning of everything i am just so elated and so happy that everything is working out the way that it is and it is all divine timing it really is all just divine timing it happens when it is when it's supposed to which is why i'm also not concerned about instagram too much because all the people that want to support me and the right people who are going to support the things that i want that i that i want to pursue and that i want to do and make a difference in the world those people are going to come when they when they come and they're gonna <laughs> that sounded weird those people are going to come and support me at, at the right time when it's meant to happen so i am just okay with everything that's going on in my life whether or not i have ten thousand followers a million a bajillion a trillion like you know i'm i'm good you know everything will work out the way that it's supposed to and it will also work out in your life as well so thank you so much for listening and i will be here on thursday and stay tuned for episode 23 episode 22 is next and i will see you then